Can you remember any mad things from school that you can bring up? <laughs> uh, I remember some too, yeah. <laughs> any, any that are suitable for family viewing, anyway? <laughs> uh, probably not. Well, it's really good, really good to see you again, anyway. It's been a while, eh? Where are you up in Queensland? Pardon? You up in Queensland, or where are you? Yeah, yeah, Brisbane. I've been up here nearly 10 years now. Um, yeah, yeah. After I was at Greg's, in my third year at Greg's, I got a phone call of a bloke. Um, he's, called, he's called Mick Hornby. I nearly said he was called Mick Hornby. He still is called Mick Hornby. And um, he, said, I want you to, uh, he, he used to do a prack at St. Greg's under Daniel Anderson. And he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he heard of me and he rang me up. He said, Lee, I want you to run this program up here. I said, what have you got? He said, he basically said, he, he rattled on for about three minutes and basically what he had was nothing. <laughs> you know, he had all these plans. And here I am yeah. looking at, I was, I was, I'd just been chatting to JK, I was looking out across, across St. Greg, Gregory's, the acreage, the tennis courts, the swimming pool. Yeah, yeah. Um, you'd started kicking on, Grote was kicking on, Adam Elliott was still at the school, Joe Stimmo was yeah. still at the school. And then here's this fella telling me that, he wanted me to run this show and there was nothing. But he basically, he told his dream to me, mate. And so I came up here. Yeah. Mate, honestly, I, I probably had the best five years of my working life, eh? Like, we, we did well. Really? Five, yeah. And then um, we've, we've, we've kicked a couple of NRL players out from there. And um, I've left, I left there about four years ago. Um, my assistant took over and, and Mick Hornby was the boss at another school. So I set another one up there and brought them into the top division as well. So, wow. so yeah. So and then oh, last, wow. o- last October, uh, basically, uh, I basically did my business full time from then. So um, I've done twelve <laughs> years of schoolboy rugby league, mate. The year I met you, the first one. Wow, that was the first one. That was the first one. Yeah, I'd never done schoolboy rugby league before. You had a good career then. Yeah, it's, been right. it's been all right. Yeah. It's been all right. It's been all right. How's your preseason going? Yeah, it's good. I um, I actually had stem cells in my knee. Um, off season, so I've sort of sort of been a bit of a slow process. Um, I've really just been focusing on getting the knee right. So it's just, it's just it was it was a bit sore last year. Sort of been wearing. So I had stem cells in it back in 2015 after that year, and it's been pretty good since then. And then last year, just like wear and tear, I think all meniscus and all that damage I've sort of done through it over the years. Um, yeah, I just had had sort of fat taken out of my stomach and then put it in a uh, mix it with my blood and put stem cells in my knee. So. Um, yeah, I couldn't run for 12 weeks, so I've only just started to sort of run now and get back into it, but uh, I'm just sort of taking my time and making sure everything, my body's feeling good, so. Would I be right in thinking this is your proper full off-season and pre-season for maybe ever? Uh, uh, yeah, well, the last, yeah, pretty much, it's been a lot. I mean, was no, last year was, would have, you know, the World Cup back got declined and we had the origin, so, uh, yeah, this year was really good just to have a rest and really not, not do much, which was good. I just recover and get the body right. If you remember, twenty twenty was the late origin, mm. so you didn't you didn't have an off a proper off season then, I suppose, really. Or no, 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 anyway. no, I did it. No, I did not after the year. No, then before that was um, yeah, the Aussies and the Italian World Cup, and then yeah, it's just it's, this is this has been the proper one of just full full rest, which is I've I've really uh, enjoyed actually just taking. Do you, it, do you feel the benefits uh, of it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Just, yeah, I've um, yeah, I got engaged, so that was a. Good thing to you do. Just told, you just told one of my questions. I was going to ask you. <laughs> I was going to ask you how you could get down on one knee with a dicky knee. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got. I used the other knee, so I was all right. But uh, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty good. I did it out at um, my parents' house out of Menangle, so we went out. Just said we we're going out there for lunch, and then um, old Johnny set up. Uh, yeah, saw the balloons and the signage when we walked in. So the John, Johnny set up. A, Johnny set up the camera on both sides. To how, are get, um, how are Johnny and Rosie? Yeah, yeah, they're good. They're good. They're um, <laughs> just uh, they're in an angle, just living living yeah. the life. So, yeah. are you a football post still there? Uh no, he's taking them all down now. He's just sort of he, he just bought a new tractor for about fifty grand. It's just this uh, top of the top of the range, um, yeah, indoor air conditioning radio sort of tractor. So he just sort of that's his that's his pretty much job now. He just rolls around that every day. And you know after the engagement, the you know after engagement, what's coming, and then and it'll be kiddies, it'll be little teddies running around. They'll need some yeah. football posts. That's true. I'll have to set it up. I'll have to, Tony will set him up again. I, I probably won't, but he knows, he knows how to make him pretty good. He's not good, throwing so. him away, has he? He's not, he's not re-welded <laughs> him or anything. Or... It's, just, it's just a couple of old pipes. I'm sure he'll uh, do a couple uh, laying around. How, how big was that for you growing up, having that in your garden? And Is your brother older? Yeah. Your brother older? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brother's older. Um, but Matt sort of, he had a, 
sort of leg defi- hip deficiency when it, so he couldn't really run too much. I don't know if you, you probably did. Did you meet my brother? I don't know if you did. Briefly, um, well, obviously I've seen him. I've met him briefly, yeah. but I've also seen him on your socials and whatnot. Yeah. So he didn't really play much sport when when we were kids because he sort of yeah his hip, his leg was a bit shorter than uh, than the other, so he couldn't really run too much. So I, a lot of my times as a kid was just sort of playing by myself and just yeah pretending. Um, yeah, I was just playing footy in the backyard against myself. So it was it was a lot of good times. I was I was a Roosters fan growing up. I played for Canberra Rams, so my our red, white, and blue colours were, were, were the same. Yeah. So I was sort of yeah always just. Was out in the backyard with myself. All my all my friends growing up, they were, they were all in Canada. So Menangle was about 10, 15 minutes away from every run. So it was a bit, um, yeah, far from the action. But I just used to play footy and play all sorts of sports. Dad set up, you know, cricket nets, you know, hit a few golf balls, you know, footy, just, just whatever. So have some you're, not allowed, you're not allowed to talk about cricket in this conversation. It's not when you've got an accent <laughs> like yeah. mine, it's something great. Yeah, fair enough on your end. But on our end, it's been, uh, it's been pretty good. I know, I know, I know. The, um, the like, so I'm trying to picture you when you were a kid there, mate. Did you play rugby league as a six, seven, or eight or eight year old, or did you pick Yeah. Up? Yeah, I started um I started playing soccer my first year. And then um all the it was just sort of because all the all my mates from school were playing soccer, then we're like, oh let's give give footy a crack. So uh, we all started playing for Camden about under sixes and then uh yeah, from then on the state of Camden playing playing footy um in the winter and then I sort of did athletics and cricket in the summer. So um and then when I sort of got to under tens, I sort of played league on Saturdays and union on Sundays, and uh, yeah, it was a pretty jam packed weekend. Just I just loved sports as a kid, and as I said, I had all that room at home to sort of practice and and do all those things at home as well. So just what let, I love. Let, let me guess: if you're a Roosters fan growing up, then your heroes would have been people like Craig Wing and mm, yeah, Raff, Freddie. Raff, I love Moss. Yeah, yeah, I love. Yeah, 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 yeah I love Freddie. I remember. Yeah, I sort of because that was sort of the time when I was in the grand finals. I remember crying like when they lost. Um, you know, Todd Byrne down the sideline, Scotty sat the tackle, and like all yeah. those sort of things. Much with my my friends from school, and I was a bit upset about that. But do you yeah. remember the old one grand? Fi- sorry, the old two grand final. Do you remember the win against the Warriors? Uh, yeah, sort of. I don't really remember that as much as the um the loss for some reason. I don't, I don't know why. But well, Freddie yeah. Freddie had a band round his head and blood. Yeah, pouring I remember out. That, yeah. But um, Moza, Moza made a big hit in the middle of it. I think I forget yeah. I forget the names. I might be wrong. I think it might have been Villasanti. Um, mm. took took out Fittler off the ball, so Mozza took it under his own under his own spell yeah. to sort it out. Basically, good old yeah. <laughs> he's a he's a tough. One. I met we met him. I met him um, in England. We went over there for the World Club Challenge. He's a great great yeah. fella. Yeah, he is. His neck's about so the size nice. of yeah, RS. he's huge. Yeah, <laughs> he's from he's from he's from my place. So he was like two years above me, same club and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah he's more respected around the club for sure. Oh, mate, mate, unbelievable. Um, <sighs> well, let's 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 not get to high school yet, mate. You're running around as that kid in in primary school and playing every sport under the sun. Did you think you had anything special then, or no? Um, yeah, I was sort of as a kid. I was just I was pretty fast, so all, all my speed. I, um, you know, I sort of just remember when I was a kid, just sort of running around teams, and um, I was sort of the yeah the kid that sort of just get the ball and. Score a try, and then I, I played. I remember so year six. Um, I sort of tried out. I think I went to McKillop, made it to McKillop, but I was pretty small back then, so I didn't really kick on. I think I had like a Australian sort of schoolboys merit team uh, for rugby league. But I didn't make that, but I was I went pretty well. And I remember I made New South Wales touch um, mm. in under sixes, so that was pretty cool. Actually, Boyd Corner actually made us all there from Tyree, so we were in the yeah. same team um, for New South Wales, which was pretty cool. And um, I, yeah, I just sort of had the, the speed and agility when I was a kid, and then I sort of. Yeah, I just sort of got to high school and every kid was sort of getting getting bigger than me until I sort of had I didn't sort of grow to I was yeah, probably year twelve. Did um oh, I've got some proof of that in a minute, mate. I've got I've been digging <laughs> out in the wardrobe for you. Um the Did you go to St. Gregory's for rugby league or was it a school decision? Yeah, um bit of both. All my mates from some I went to St. Paul's Camden as a kid and all, all the boys there wanted to go to St. Greg's and we all played footy as well. So we did hear good things. All we knew it was a sort of uh, footy school. We knew Chris Lawrence was, uh, was there. He was, a, you know, a gun player. There's a lot of gun players coming through. And obviously, there's so much, you know, there's so many older players who had been to St. Greg's and were in NRL all the time or, you know, teams or people were coaching from St. Greg's. So it was, uh, when we were from that area, I think everyone was sort of sporty, knew that Greg's was a good sports school. And uh, it, was, it was the only really option. I didn't, didn't think of any other school. It, what players were there that people would know when you arrived? 
Or Jory uh, Mitchell? Well, uh, I remember Chris Lawrence, yeah, when we were in year seven, I think he debuted. He was in year 12. Yeah. yeah. And he debuted at the time. And that was, that was pretty big for us because he was um, yeah, walking around school the next day after his debut. And if you remember his debut, he had a, a great <laughs> debut for the Tigers. Um, so Didn't he, he have an like, exam that morning or something, Gast? Or? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I do remember he was like at school either on the day or the day before. And then he was playing first grade the next day. Then he was at school the day after. So um, to sort of see that, you know, like, I remember Chris Lawrence, he had all the, the records at athletics as well. And like, he was just the ultimate sportsman. So guys like that, I, I definitely remember. I think Ryan Hoffman was there as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there were a couple. The um, Did you play sort of like seven A's, eight A's, nine A's, 10 A's, or was it a bit? Um, um, no, nah, I was always in the A's. I actually played up, up a year because um, a lot of my mates were a bit older than me. My, I was sort of, uh, you know, I'm a January birthday, so I was a year younger right. than my school. But um, yeah, I sort of played up a year. Um, I think it was 11s, 12s. Or 12s, 13s, I played up here because I was with my friends. So I was always uh, up there, um, especially at, at Camden. You know, it's only group six. And then I went to, to Eagle Vale in under either 13s or 14s, which was a big step up for me. I wasn't like, I wasn't the star player then. I was sort of had to find my, uh, yeah, find my own path there. I was sort of yeah. fighting for spots. But I sort of eventually um, yeah, found my groove. I, I remember when I arrived at Greg's, and I mean this with all due respect here and what you've become and everything, but nobody, no, even people who were in, in, in rugby league, immersed in rugby league, and I'm saying this because I suppose kids are going to be watching this and I want them to believe that they too can be can be something moving forward. It's not like everybody was saying James Tedesco is going to be the best thing since sliced bread. They were all saying you were a good footballer, but I remember a team list where you were given a spot on the wing and you spent an awful lot of time on the wing, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, that's when I got the Greg so. I only had under 12s and I was only 11 that yeah. year. So I remember I, I've tried out for the 12s and I was, as I said, I was pretty small. So everyone was sort of starting to grow and I stayed pretty small. And as you said, I, I wasn't, didn't have, um, well, I was only 12, I guess. So I had a, had a bit going for me, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't make the 12As. I made the 12Bs. And I think I speak to Mr. Bullock, who's the, the um, coach there. Apparently that's um, well documented where whatever kids come through to the, the under 12s, under 13s, they said, I didn't, I didn't make the A's when I was, their age, so not to, not to worry too much, but yeah, yeah, I, I remember, I, I, mean, I sort of had to, work, I had to work pretty hard. I think from that, from the high school age, I reckon I worked, yeah, really hard to sort of get to, to where I was because I remember in fifteens, I didn't even make the MCS side, which is the first yeah. step after up the school side. So there was five players from our team, I um, mean under fifteens who made MCS, and I, I didn't even make it. So yeah, there was a time there I think where uh, I was just, yeah, I was probably too small, and then I, you know, I wasn't a standout kid where I was, you know, scoring tries every week and. And doing this and doing that, so that's like, even even around the, um, as I said when I went to Eagle Valley in the West Comp, and you know they got the talent and the guys over there were you know much more high than at Group Six, and I was a bit out of my depth. I didn't really make the the rep sides and like thirteens yeah. and fourteens, um, but yeah, I always, I always was pretty confident in myself. I just enjoyed the game, and I think as I said, I, I didn't have, probably have that um, name where I wasn't a big standout, but you know I always had a crack. And yeah, like you said, I played on the wing. I think I started on the wing. Uh, for Harold Matz as well, and I eventually, uh, so I think I, I think I started on the bench for Harold Matz. Is so it true? Nuffaluma played at fullback, and you played on the wing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nuffaluma was started fullback, and then at Harold Matz for the same age, so I ended up playing fullback for the for the rest of the year. I think I ended up getting players player, and then the next year, SD Ball, I was under eighteen, so we were only seventeen. Nuffa was fullback, and I was on the wing uh, for the whole year because Nuffa was a beast back then. Like, yeah, he was just no one could tackle him. He was, he was yeah. a freak of a, a freak of a runner. I think I sort of. Um, during that time, I was I was on the wing, but I think I was playing. Yeah, I was playing obviously five eight for school, so I was always working on my all skills and 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 all, and kicking and everything just to um, yeah, just to make sure I was well rounded in all those areas. Yeah. I, I I always tell this story. Twenty ten, say that you came up to me and said, "Can I have a go at five eight? Do you remember it? We were <laughs> Not on, really, but I we, were on, we, we were on the terraces out the back. Craig Bissell remembers it, right? Yeah. And um, I remember you coming up to me, mate, and you, you'd have been 60 kilos wet through a record. Yeah. You, you were also quite shy. You weren't yeah. You weren't brash. You weren't no. out there. And you very politely asked me if you could have a more 5 8. And because I, I don't know <laughs> if you remember, I came in and said, right, anybody can try anywhere as a clean slate. Kind yeah. of thing. And you did, you basically did one thing. I remember it was to the right to me. You'd made a bit of a shimmy and. Did something with the ball. I went, yeah. Put his name down. <laughs> that was it. I just, I just made a decision straight away. 
um, was a good to see you have, have something. Um, how how confident were you then? Like at the start, yeah. at the start of that year, like we uh, did you think you'd have the career you're having? Um, no, looking back, um, yeah. I mean, back then I was I was all right, but again, like I said, I wasn't a really star. Like I'm going to be the next best thing. I didn't play first grade till that year twelve. Kids are playing right. first grade. I, I didn't. I mean, kids are playing first grade at school in year nine. You turn into you know next yeah. best thing. But um, yeah, I mean, I always I don't know. I always just was quietly confident in my. And I knew I worked hard, and I knew I did. I sacrificed a lot, you know. And especially around that age, everyone's going out parties and drinking and and whatnot. And I just always had a um, yeah good. I don't know, I just had a good, good head on me, I guess, and I had a good family, and I knew I just had to keep working hard. And um, I, I would define your mindset, and I assume it's not changed that much, but like it was basically like you know those heart rate monitors you get in hospitals when people are yeah. with hearts beating and then they die. Yeah. Yours was like that all the time. But <laughs> if something good was happening, bad was happening, you just seemed yeah. to lose it in exactly the same way. It was like yeah. you dealt with the twin imposters of good and bad. The same. Yeah. What. I feel like that's been there for my whole career. Even when I I made my debut, I was you know happy, and then I did my ACL, and it was it was like oh, I didn't I didn't really show too much emotion. Even if we're winning, like we obviously we won the grand final for St Greg's, and it was yeah. like, I was happy, but was, it wasn't really. I remember over, that. You know, over emotionally, yeah, I was just I just I don't know. I don't really. I try to keep my steady head. I, I mean, I, I am happy. You know, I do get sad, like obviously do yeah. times, but I don't, I don't let it affect affect me. I guess the um, I remember. I remember John and Rody taking you home in the car because the night we won the MTS Grand Final, everyone went nuts. <laughs> everyone ran on the field from the side. <laughs> if they didn't have blazers on, they'd have rang the police and said there was a crowd. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, and um, Grody stole the trophy for the presentation, and uh, it was just like the place went nuts. And then and then we went back to the school, and everyone lined up on the bus. All the boards lined up for us to come off the bus in the middle of the night and cheered us into the refectory. Uh, and you went home with your mum and dad. Like, you were just... That's another story yeah. of too. You're just like, no. Nah. And your dad was like, no, he's not really like that. <laughs> hey, I don't know. I, I, like, I, don't, I don't know. I actually wish I was on that bus. It sounds fun, but... Uh, I, I, I hope you enjoy your NRL Grand Final wins a bit more and you're already... Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I do, I do. But, uh, again, I don't... I don't know. I, I think when people ask me about those those wins, grand finals, and origins, it's, it's still like, oh, it's it's good. I mean, I haven't. Uh, I guess I haven't probably. Well, when I look back on my career, I'll probably appreciate a lot more than than I have now because it's just sort of you know I'm still playing footy and I'm just doing my thing, so I haven't really. Yeah. Do you think it's a mindset of just wanting the next one, or do you think you're just cruising? Yeah, I think I'm just cruising, but. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, I do. I mean, I I'm never satisfied. I mean, if you win one, yeah. or you win two, or. Yeah, win Dally M or whatever. It's not like it's not no satisfaction. Even now, this has been my tenth year since debut in two thousand and twelve, and then still I still feel like there's so much to achieve, and I've still got a lot more, like so much more to get to improve on, and um, and to get back from the game. So I'm actually really, really excited. I never, I feel like you probably, yeah, it's probably different to other guys if they, if they win the grand final, they wouldn't have a certain achievement, and then they're satisfied. But um, yeah, that's just that's just not my mindset really. I'm always looking for ways to get better, and always. Always and now I'm the captain. Now I'm the captain, which is a, a huge responsibility. I just and I want our team to get better and better. And that's just that's my mindset from now. I mean, but before I think it was very individual for myself. I always just worried about my own personal game and getting better. But now, as a captain, I sort of feel that uh, responsibility. I want our team to be the best. I want us to keep getting better and better. So I'm I'm really excited for that sort of new if, chapter for me. If, you, if you're talking to kids, like th- this week I'm doing clinic trials. There'll be about 100 kids watch this this week minimum. All right. How how do you go how do you go about and you know I'm not asking for the full thing because it might take forever but how do you go about making yourself a better better do you, do you study your game a lot do you reflect a lot after a game do you, mm. what how, what do you do yeah I've definitely realised over the years it's uh, it's a lot more than just training and, and playing there's a lot more uh, personally as an athlete and as a player to do I mean when I first came in I had a lot of injuries and I sort of just I knew I just kept training hard, training hard, it'll, it'll turn, it'll turn, and that can turn, but there's a lot of stuff off the field I had to um, change, and first of all was getting my body right, which, so for me personally, I sort of see a massage therapist twice a week when I'm playing, and even now during pre-season, to massage and stretching, so my body's body's right every week, I, you know, body's really important, and I've sort of been through those um, downs to realise, 
you know, I can't just, there's, there's more you're going to do. You're going to, it's not, it's more as a player than just training every day and playing. So I've sort of got that in my routine since 2015. Um, and then your mind as well. I mean, it's hard. I'm not going to say it's to young kids, but um, if you want to sort of be in the NRL, making, having a clear mind and yeah. sort of seeing a guy, seeing a guy weekly about just having, uh, not overthinking things. I remember that, that was a thing you used to tell me to let it flow. I still remember that from our days, let it flow. Because especially now in first grade, there's so many external sources trying to trying to influence you. So um, for me, overthinking and is the worst thing I can do. I just want to be clear, have a clear mind going into game. I'm just playing footy. And taking a lot of it's take going back to me as a kid, just having fun and enjoying it. Because, yeah, when you get to first grade, there's a lot of information. You're getting a lot of social media and external sources that can definitely cloud your, yeah. Um, yeah. your judgment and your, and your vision. So, yeah, I mean, I, that let it flow is still uh, it's pretty clear with me. And I, I, I speak about that with the guy every week. It's just... Um, being clear on my role and playing footy and enjoying it. I don't want to. Let me let me tell you, let me tell you where that let it flow comes from. So, in my coaching career, then you were basically the second player that there was William Hopalati, and I don't know if you ever played against William Hopalati when he was a kid before. Yeah. He, was, he, was oh, a yeah. he was the yeah. ultimate. Um, and then there was James Sedesco. There was a young James Sedesco. Now. There was no, there was no point in ever filling your head with information. Confused, <laughs> there was just nothing to be gained from it because I firmly believe that, and I'm not, um, you know, pumping your tyres up just because you're here. But this is any quality rugby league player or any sportsman. Their genius comes from there down. Like <laughs> you express yourself through your body, and you didn't need shed loads of information from me trying to control what you did. There was one thing I used to try and do to you. And you turn this back on me against Westfield. I used to tell you not to do chip kicks in your own half. <laughs> <laughs> you, you remember you did it with 14 0 up against Westfield. Yeah, I think I did actually, yeah. Yeah, and you turn around to me and you give me a wink or a nod or a shout or something, just cheeky to me. And I just went <laughs> touche. Like, that, yeah. that, that, that was the only thing. Like thinking back to you then, the more there was no point in me trying to clog up your game. <laughs> it was better coaching just to let you free. Because nine yeah. times out of ten, you made the right decision anyway. Yeah, yeah. And if, a, if you didn't, I could just send on a message and just say, oh, tell him to look a bit wider or tell him to look mm. a bit wider. That was it. I didn't need to. Yeah. And these other yeah. players, these other players, I used to remember, that was like, don't forget, I was only a young coach, Teddy. And I used to go around the dressing room and speak to Roy Elliott. I said, right, 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 Roy, the field is green and there's two poles at the end. And what I want you to do in that way, you and then I'd go to somebody like Brendan Colley and you'd have to give him the Magna Carta of instruction. And then you'd go to Brody and say, David Clemmer just said something nasty about you. <laughs> Teddy, Teddy, let it flow. Let it flow. Yeah. And, um, you know, that, I suppose that's, if you like, the art of coaching. I'm not going to make myself so... But it is also what you've, you've, you've hinted at. Your, your yeah. genius is from there down. Yeah. So literally let it flow. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you don't need to pass an exam on rugby league. You need the, your exam is a physical game that you have to. Yeah. That's- yeah. Well, a lot of the like my training through through the week is I'm going to nail everything. I'm going to work hard, train hard, do my extras, work on um, my skills, passing, stepping, catching. I always nail them every week. And then yeah. when when you get to the game, just trust it. I don't I don't need to be as I said. I don't need to be overthinking about if I did this right or if I didn't do that. It's I've got to trust my preparation. I've, I've nailed everything, and I've just got to go out and play. And, you know, Robert gives us details every week. You know, the certain defence can do this, teams can do that, and that's important to have um, up there. But it's at the back of my head. I'm not. I'm not. That's not the forefront. You know, I want my instincts and vision and everything else to take, take over. But it's, it's still at the back of my head. So, and then when I'm playing as well, if I've realised you know, the defence is really jamming in on me, you know, that's 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 a note taken for the next play. You got to keep. You got to keep. Um, you know, taking those little mental notes, but. Again, it's not, it's not where I'm thinking about it nonstop. I'm still in the game and I'm having fun. And those, as I said, back in those days at school footy, um, when I was a kid, like, yeah, we were allowed to do whatever and it was fun. And, yeah. and I guess some, some guys lose that when we get to NRL and it gets a bit more serious. It gets a lot more serious and you got a lot of eyes on you. Sort of, you lose that creativity. But You also, um, had, you also had this place. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a similar Mate, place. JK's gym. I was going to... I was gonna put the singlet on, but I didn't want to scare the children watching the thing. Has <laughs> it changed a bit now, the gym? I don't. Has it changed a bit now, the gym? Or is it yeah, still it's a... completely different. 
Don't forget, JK yeah. had a sign up there that said just one punch. Can you imagine that in this day and age? <laughs> He'd be out crying. He'd be on the front page in the Telegraph. Yeah, <laughs> a lot, a bit, a bit yeah so I, found, I found a couple of shirts. I don't know if this was from the year you were there. That, that's yeah, that's well. one of my coaching ones. Where's the badge gone? Where's the badge gone? It helped us. Yeah. Uh, and then I wanted to talk about this a little bit too. You can't see it, but this is a CCC shirt. New yeah. South Wales CCC. You, um, you're talking about your free reign and your free your free game playing. You actually, do you remember? You went and scored five tries for CCC at Burley Heads. Yeah. I think I you were scored four. I match. scored four. One was disallowed, so I scored four. I could have had five. That one was disallowed. Yeah. I was on the wing. I was on the wing. Left wing, yeah. And then you ended up yeah. playing Aussie schoolboys on the wing, didn't you? I did. I did. I went to schoolboys, so I uh, went on tour. We had a tour around England and, and Wales and stuff. So I, I think I played. We had six games. I think I played two on the wing. The rest I was. On the extended, um, yeah, bench. So I only played two games over there, and I was I was on the wing for the both of them. But our I team know, was pretty stacked. We had some good players. I know you did, and I think what really set you up for the rest of your career was KFC's classic catches, the cricket that we did when we did the <laughs> Army Army versus Crusaders. Wow, these are good. These are good memories. Yes, good. yeah, yeah. I've Great got times. I've got the picture too. That's you there, like when you said you were small. Like I've yeah. Just, have you? Has your mum got that picture at home or? Yeah, I remember that. I know that. Yeah, she would. She would. She's got a whole scrapbook of only. The um, only mate, honestly, dead set. When you go back and look at that picture, it, you, you probably. It's fair to say you're probably about the third smallest bloke in the picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember there's, one, there's a photo of me of me running out, and I had the jersey tape, and it's really just hanging over my. It's just yeah. It looks so skinny. There's some good players here, mate. I mean, there's some that nobody will ever will, will ever heard of, like <laughs> Max Keane, Josh Ingram. Um, yeah, Max was a gun. I know. Um, uh, Zach McKay. Luffy, yeah. Give it a good half, Luffy. Hey. Yeah. Luffy is Luffy there. Uh, Brendan Colley. Ed yeah. Murphy went well. He's Murph, yeah, he was, yeah. He was playing at Bears. He was training with us for a bit last couple of years. Dominic Chalker. Yeah, he was. He was rough. <laughs> Oliver Gordon. <laughs> Oli, Oli had a good track there for real. He's a Bulldogs. Nick Walker, Roy Elliott, the Shicks. Yeah. Picky. <laughs> I've seen Six so, around. Mate, he's grown a beard. He looks like. Yeah, he's got a. I know, it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. Um, Sabir. Um, Sabir. Mate, Corey White, I reckon, was unlucky not to at least. Yeah. Yeah, Corey was very good. He, so he's playing Camden now. He was the last couple of years. Um, He's, he's played for Australia for police. He's played for Australia. Yeah. Police. Yeah, he's a beast. Ben Dossiter. Oh, Doss. I played, that's why in year six, I played, you said I touched with Doss as well. He was very skillful. Sean Royal. Do you remember the oh. helicopter? Do you remember the helicopter coming to get Sean Royal off the field when we played against the Bulldogs? It was meant to be under 18s and they brought oh, out yeah. four year olds. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I was thinking of that. Remember when I, I sent Billy Kidd to the hospital as well? I threw that long ball and he got yeah. smoked. Uh, uh, that was at Paddy's Blacktown. <laughs> Blacktown, yeah. Still for that. I know Billy will be watching, so sorry for that, Bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, was a, that, was love when, that was the year. That was the game where I th- first thought we might we might do something that this year. Cause yeah. St. Greg's, uh, sorry, Pats were, were stacked that year too. Yeah. Um, had no fun. No fun there. Yeah, there was loads of them there. Grody, obviously, I mean, uh, I don't think Grody was ever the same once he got that knockoff bent here. And, uh, I know, I know. It's hard to say, man. He was a, man, he was, he was played uh, in front of the feeder, and that when he was first coming through, Shane's he loved him, and then I think after that hit, yeah, it was, it was a sickening hit. Uh, Michael Tonner, another good one. Tonner, yeah, he was a union player, great union player. He only played the league at school, but I, pl- I played James Luff in the halves with you. Yeah, I knew, I knew Billy Kit would try and take some of the shine away from you. <laughs> <laughs> the ele- electric shock, Billy Kit, and Warren McDonald. Who you refer to as, as Matthew Groke's dad? <laughs> <laughs> he, he used to ring me up, abusing me. I wasn't picking Billy really Kit, but you, you, in my opinion, you were just never suited to playing together. Oh uh, well, actually, yeah, I love Billy, but yeah, of course, yeah, it probably didn't. It probably didn't. I don't know. Uh, Luffy was just rock solid. You knew he was just steady the ship for us, and I could sort of just. I used to say to Luffy. In. I used to say to Luffy, and all can be revealed now. Said Luffy. Who's more likely to score a try? James Love or James Tedesco? He'd go James Tedesco. I said, well, if Tedesco wants the ball, 
Just give it him. <laughs> and then in the grand final, guess who scored the third try? The Tesco didn't score. Oh, 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 it was Luffy. Oh, second oh. try. <laughs> um, Billy, Billy oh. played the year after, though, and was brilliant. Yeah. Billy played for me the year after. He was, he was superb. Um, oh, and then Freddie. Fred Stop. Oh, Freddie Agler, I forget. He was a wrecking ball. And again, if, if you look back to that video, he went nuts that grand final day when we uh, when we <laughs> won it. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think what else. Um, nah, mate, I won't keep I won't keep you much longer. The um, mate, I wanted you to uh, mate. If you can package everything that you've said about injuries and all that, because you had you had a bloody bad injury straight away, didn't you? I remember. Yeah. I remember turning up watching watch your debut, and you lasted about seventeen minutes, and yeah. um, and then. About three seasons later, towards the back end of the season, you did you wiped out. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I didn't, did the, Deal, I did dealing the, with setbacks. Dealing with setbacks. There's two things about you: dealing with setbacks, and you didn't always have it your own way growing up, did you? In terms of regular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the the setbacks part. I, don't know, I was always just. Um, I was say when I sort of did that myself. First thing, mom and dad were more upset and devastated than me. I was sort of taking it in my stride. <laughs> I think that that's that first year. Um, no, I spent a whole I spent my whole rehab that whole year with Gareth Ellis. Gareth Ellis injured his foot. Yeah, I think that's maybe before that game or the game after. So I had to train with him the whole year. I remember I just got so big, like so soft. I was still pretty skinny when I debuted. I reckon I put on like five six kilos just from working out with him the whole year. Like, yeah, they, yeah. They sort of I think they realized they sort of wanted me to get a taste of first grade football training. I remember I just come in every day and just get flogged. Like, I was just smashed and I used to you know, have some down there. But I was always still positive about it all because I was seeing some benefits. I was getting big and, um, yeah. you, know, and was, you know, Benji and Gareth and all these guys. And, um, and then I sort of, 2013, yeah, I sort of had, I came, came started on the wing again and I sort of played about 15 games on and off. Um, I sort of wasn't myself, you know, come back from ACL, I just wasn't, I don't know, I still had a bit of head noise. I just wasn't that confident. And then in 14, did syndesmosis and then had surgery on that and I didn't break my kneecap. That year, so I think I realised um, sort of getting a bit of bit of doubt after that. Like, geez, it's just really uh, for me. You know, I've been three years. I've had about four surgeries, yeah. serious yeah. surgeries, and I'm uh, not playing the footy I'd, I'd like to. So, um, yeah, as I said, I sort of reached out and found those those two guys who have um, been. I don't know where I'd be without those guys and uh, someone. Yeah, they they instilled the belief in me, back in me, and my body and mind. And, uh, but through that whole process of the setbacks, I was just. I had the you know, love and support of uh, my my parents and my family and then my friends. I was just yeah, I didn't I didn't get as I said as you said I wasn't when I was a kid. I didn't get too emotionally yeah. invested. I was yeah. always confident in my ability and um, yeah. Diet, diet, your diet. Do you sort of really measure? Yeah, it? <laughs> yeah. So I think I realised that. I mean, when he just when we came in as as kids, when I was twelve, uh, two thousand twelve and thirteen. There was about ten of us all around the same age, like Mitch and Brooksy, Moses, Brooksy, Siren and. Brownie, Kyle, we were all the same age coming in the first game. We are just like, how good is this? We just all pretty, we became really close mates and we are just like, this is the best. You know, playing first grade, training together every day. Yeah. And it wasn't, I yeah. feel like we weren't very professional. It was just like, you know, we'd get, have a few drinks. Our diet wasn't great. And we just sort of just, um, yeah, I wasn't taking it as seriously as, I, as we should have. And, and that showed us we didn't really win many games and we met a great team. So I think I realised after those injuries and, um, you know, that wasn't playing my best footy that I needed to fix up a lot of those things and, Diet, sleep. Um, Are you a good sleeper? You know, Are you a good sleeper? N- now I am. I, I probably wasn't when I was back then. I used to stay up later, and you know, wake later. If I had to come into training early, I was always, you know, a bit tired. Now I'm up at you know, six thirty-seven every every morning. I'm in bed by probably nine thirty. So um, <laughs> I think that's just as you get older and more experienced. But as a kid, you know, I try to pass that on to uh, all the boys coming through. Uh, the culture of the Roosters is is really good, and we've had a lot of great leaders at the club and. Sort of time for me to sort of, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a new wave now. All those guys that were there when I came all, all sort of gone. So, um, yeah, that's just about me being being that leader now, leader now and passing on that, that knowledge. There's a kid, there's a kid at the Roosters called Ponataka Rangi, who was one of mine. You've got to look after him. I think he'll be about. Yeah. He might have been reserved. He'd be in, he might be at North this year. I'm not sure. Okay, what was his first name? Connor. Connor. Okay. Ponataka Rangi. Yeah, one kid did say he, he was coached by you. I can't remember. Lupe, Lupe Tavalu. Lupe, oh, it was Lupe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. well, there's been a couple. Uh, how, how are you? How are your kiddies books going? Yeah, good. Oh, so 
Uh, great feedback. Eh? It was just sort of sort of talking about just as me as a kid there growing up in Camden, playing footy, and you know, my mates from then, um, and just that sort of journey and uh, about playing for Camden. And all, 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 so many kids I run into that, you know, so much they love the books and the Teddy's tips in there as well, you know, drinking water, um, eat, eating the vegetables, just, 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 you know, simple stuff like that. Um, yeah, I feel like they've got so much out of it and you know, they're all asking if I'm, if I'm doing another, another few books from the read. I think I had a, you know, a neighbour who was in my apartment block, he was, I think the day he came out, he was, he sent me a photo of his uh, kid just reading it in bed, he's on school holidays, just like, couldn't stop reading it. So, just, just sort of that, things. That, I mean, that'd be thought, a bit humbling all the thought, that thing. Yeah, it? definitely, definitely. I mean, that, that, that means a lot to, um, yeah, you see kids, um, you know, reading, reading books. I mean, it's not really, it's not really cool to, to, read, to read books, but if, 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 you know, some kids are getting a lot out of it, then yeah, that means a lot. Hey, one of the good things about doing these interviews with people, I've, I've done Alan, Will Hopper, Gutho, Ronaldo Molotalo, got a few others lined up. But in many in many cases, I've not seen him for a few years. I mean, you and I have always kept in touch, but this is actually the first time we've been face-to-face for a bit. So, um, mate, I just wanted to say um, how super proud I am of everything you're doing and the, the man that that kid has become. And he, oh, thanks, Alan. <laughs> Yeah, because we don't we don't always get time to, we don't always get the chance to say that when you're a teacher mm. or a coach of juniors yeah. people move on don't they go to sometimes they don't go to bigger things at all they go to yeah sometimes they go yeah, to worse yeah. things but yeah you don't always get a chance to say that so yeah really proud and um, proud to say I've been I'll, yeah. I'll always uh, yeah, always remember the St Greg's days mate, especially it's always a lot of good times and uh, a lot of good laughs so, mate yeah, thanks for yeah. thanks for that year mate it's been a lot can I just Appreciate can I just grab can I just grab a quick picture of thumbs up before we go? Yeah. Nice one. Cheers, lad. Thanks, Lee. Cheers, Thank that you. Was...